Hey guys, when making the Kyburn and Mountain video, which I'm going to re-upload tomorrow with better audio level, so apologies in advance for that, but when making that, I came across a passage about Bronn in A Feast for Crows that I had forgotten about. It's a fight, but it happens off screen, so we learn about it in a Cersei point of view chapter from a conversation between Cersei and Felice Stokeworth, who's Bronn's wife's older sister. So in this video, I'm going to quickly recap the details of that fight so that you have that in your back pocket, and in the rest of the video, I'm just going to read three passages from three different Cersei chapters, because during these conversations we hear her train of thought, and there are a couple funny moments, and excuse my French, but Cersei's in prime, confident bitch mode at this point, and in order to appreciate her thoughts, you kind of just need to read the full passages to get the context of what's going on. So here goes, first the summary of Bronn, in case you want to close out once this is done. So Tyrion has his trial by combat, and Bronn refuses to champion him, same as a show. The mountain kills Oberyn, Tyrion gets out of prison and kills Tywin, and Cersei comes into power, in a sense. During Tywin's wake, Felice Stokeworth tells Cersei that her sister, Bronn's wife, is thinking about naming her son Tywin. And Cersei flips out, quote, Your lackwit sister gets herself raped by half of King's Landing and Tanda thinks to honor the bastard with my lord father's name? I think not. So Bronn ends up getting lollies to name the child Tyrion, probably to piss Cersei off. It's pretty funny. And dangerous. So he was recently knighted, giving him the right to knight other people. So he starts knighting sellswords and Cersei wonders if Bronn is hiding Tyrion. So Cersei tells Felice's husband, Sir Balmain, Bronn's brother-in-law at this point, to discreetly kill Bronn, you know, like in a hunting accident or something like that. But he stupidly challenges Bronn to a duel, which Bronn wins, because instead of using the lance against Sir Balmain, Bronn just lances his horse. So Sir Balmain falls off, gets hurt, and then Bronn kills him. Then he takes over House Stokeworth for himself. Felice runs to King's Landing to get help from Cersei, but instead, Cersei gives Felice to Kyburn to cover up the conspiracy, you know, because Cersei had asked Felice and her hubby to kill someone. That's not really that legal, it was supposed to be discreet. So she gets Felice drunk, then Kyburn takes Felice downstairs to use her in his experiments while creating Frankenmount. So here are the three passages. Number one, forgive me, I live in fear. Felice opened and closed her mouth, which made her look like some especially stupid fish. In, in fear, your grace? I have not slept a whole night through since Joffrey died. Cersei filled the goblets with Hippocrates. My friends, you are my friends, I hope. And King Tommins? The dwarf is cunning. Perhaps he still lurks near, planning more murders. Perhaps some friend is hiding him. Bronn? Sir Bauman stroked his bushy mustache. He was ever the imp's creature. Only the stranger knows how many men he sent to hell at Tyrion's behest. Your grace, I think I should have noticed a dwarf skulking about our lands. My brother is small. He was made for skulking. Cersei let her hand shake. A child's name is a small thing, but insolence, unpunished, breeds rebellion. And this man Bronn has been gathering cell swords to him, Kyvern has told me. He has taken four knights into his household, said Felice. Sir Bauman snorted. My good wife flatters them to call them knights. They're up-jump cell swords, with not a thimble of chivalry to be found amongst the four of them. As I feared, Bronn is gathering swords for the dwarf. May the seven save my little son. The imp will kill him as he killed his brother, she sobbed. My friends, I put honor in your hands. But what is a queen's honor against a mother's fears? Say on, your grace. Your word shall ne'er leave this room. Cersei reached across the table and gave his hand a squeeze. I I would sleep more easily of a night if I were to hear that Sir Bronn had suffered a, a mishap whilst hunting, perhaps? Sir Bronn considered a moment. A mortal mishap? No, I desire you to break his little toe. She bit her lip. My enemies are everywhere. My friends are fools. I beg you, sir, she whispered. Do not make me say it. I understand. Sir Bronn raised a finger. A turnip would have grasped it quicker. You are a true knight indeed, sir. The answer to a frightened mother's prayers. Cersei kissed him. Do it quickly if you would. Bronn has only a few swords about him now, but if we do not act, he will surely gather more. She kissed Felice. I shall never forget this, my friends. So a bit later, Felice returns to King's Landing and we find out what happened. Quote, Lady Felice's face was bruised and swollen, her eyes red from her tears, her lower lip was broken, her clothing soiled and torn. Gods be good, Cersei said as she ushered her into the solar and closed the door. What happened to your face? Felice did not seem to hear the question. He killed him, she said in a quavery voice. Mother, have mercy. He, he. She broke down sobbing, her whole body trembling. Cersei poured a cup of wine and took it to the weeping woman. Drink this. The wine will calm you. That's it. A little more now. Stop weeping and tell me why you're here. It took the rest of the flag before the queen was finally able to coax the whole sad tale out of Lady Felice. Once she had, she did not know whether to laugh or rage. Single combat, she repeated. Is there no one in the Seven Kingdoms that I can rely upon? Am I the only one in Westeros with a pinch of wits? You were telling me that Sir Bauman challenged Bronn to single combat. He said it would be s s simple. The lance is a knight's weapon, he said, and Br Br Bronn was no true knight. 
Bauman said he would unhorse him and finish him as he lay stunned. Bronn was no true knight. That was true. Bronn was a battle-hardened killer. Your cretin of a husband wrote his own death warrant. A splendid plan, dare I ask how it went awry? But Bronn drove his lance through the chest of Bauman's poor horse. Bauman, he, his legs were crushed when the beast fell. He screamed so piteously. Sellswords have no pity, Cersei might have said. I asked you to arrange a hunting mishap, an arrow gone astray, a fall from a horse, an angry boar. There are so many ways a man could die in the woods, none of them involving lances. Felice did not seem to hear. When I tried to run to my bombman, he, he, he struck me in the face. He made my lord c c confess. Bauman was crying out for Maester Franken to attend him, but the sellswords, he, he, he... Confess? Cersei did not like that word. I trust our brave Sir Bauman held his tongue. Bronn put a dagger in his eye, and he told me I'd best be gone from Stokeworth before the sun went down or I'd get the same. He said he'd pass me around to the g g garrison if any of them would have me. When I ordered Bronn seized, one of his knights had the insolence to say that I should do as Lord Stokeworth said. He called him Lord Stokeworth. Lady Fleece clutched at the queen's hand. Your grace, you must give me knights, a hundred knights, and crossbowmen to take my castle back. Stokeworth is mine. They would not even permit me to gather up my clothes. Bronze said that they were his wife's clothes now, all my silks and velvets. Your rags are the least of your concern. The queen pulled her fingers free of the other woman's clammy grasp. I asked you to snuff out a candle to help protect the king. Instead, you heaved a pot of wildfire at it. Did your witless bombman bring my name into this? Tell me he did not. Fleece licked her lips. He... He was in pain. His legs were broken. You have to help me. Where am I to go? What will I do? She could not have the woman running around the Seven Kingdoms spreading dangerous tales. Fleece was deaf to good sense. All we did, we did in service to your grace. Proud to be faithful, you said. I recall. Cersei forced a smile. You shall stay here with us, my lady, until such time as we find a way to win your castle back. Let me pour you another cup of wine. It'll help you sleep. You are weary and sick of heart. That's plain to see. My poor dear Felice. That's it. Drink up. Carbon arrived before the food. The queen took Kyburn aside and told him of Sir Bauman's folly. I cannot have Felice spreading tales about the city. Her grief has made her witless. Do you still need women for your work? I do, your grace. The puppeteers are quite used up. Take her and do with her as you will then, but once she goes down into the black cells, need I say more? No, your grace. I understand. Good. The queen donned her smile once again. Sweet Felice, Maester Kyburn's here. He'll help you rest. Oh, said Felice vaguely. Oh, good. <laughs>